45 years ago, Star Wars was first premiered in theatres across the globe. A gallon of petrol was 79 cents, and Elvis Presley passed away at the age of 42. They were simpler times then, when most clothing could be bought for less than $40, and wrist AM radios were a freak invention everyone adored. 1977 was also the year Voyager 1 launched, to probe the deepest regions of the solar system and beyond. It hasn't disappointed so far. The veteran satellite is currently in the constellation of Ophiuchus, 23 billion kilometers away from Earth, easily making it the farthest man-made object to have ever ventured out into space. After 45 years of dutiful service, Voyager 1 is acting a little unusual. As it's well beyond our solar system, scientists now have been receiving some strange data from the satellite that causes seemingly unknown. What could be happening out there? Voyager 1 has run into an issue. While the spacecraft continues to operate as normal and return science data, the mission team is searching for the source of a system data issue. The engineering team responsible for Voyager 1 with NASA is attempting to resolve a mystery. The Deep Space Explorer is working normally and receiving and executing commands from Earth, as well as gathering and returning science data. But the readouts from the Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, don't match what's actually happening on board. Attitude control is the process of controlling the orientation of an aerospace vehicle regarding an inertial frame of reference or another entity, such as the celestial sphere, certain fields and nearby objects. To control the vehicle's attitude, sensors need to measure the current attitude, actuators need to apply the torques needed to change the attitude. Algorithms must tell the actuators what to do based on the current attitude as measured by the sensors and the desired attitude. The AACS controls the 45-year-old spacecraft's orientation. Among its other duties, it ensures that Voyager 1's high-gain antenna is pointed precisely at Earth, allowing it to send data home. All indications are that the AACS is still functioning correctly, but the telemetry data it's returning is invalid. For example, the data may look like it was randomly made or it doesn't show any possible state the AACS could be in. The issue hasn't caused any onboard fault protection systems to activate, which are designed to put the spacecraft into safe mode, a state where only essential operations are performed, giving engineers time to figure out what's wrong. Neither has the signal from Voyager 1 weakened, which suggests that the high-gain antenna is still oriented towards Earth. The team will continue to watch the signal closely to see if the bad data is coming from the AACS or another system that sends telemetry data. Until the team knows more about the issue, they can't say for sure if it will affect how long the spacecraft can collect and send science data. Voyager 1 is currently the farthest away from Earth at 14.5 billion miles, that's 23.3 billion kilometers. It takes light 20 hours and 33 minutes to travel this distance. Sending a message to Voyager 1 takes roughly two days, which is a delay the mission team is used to. Voyager 1 appears to be working flawlessly, and it's still returning scientific data for most functions. Although it is very distant from Earth, it can still receive and execute commands from us. This is because it takes about two days to send a message and receive a response. We know that the antenna is still pointing towards us because we're still in communication with Voyager 1. NASA said in a statement, the team will continue to monitor the signal closely as it continues to determine whether the invalid data is coming directly from the AACS or another system involved in producing and sending telemetry data. Until the nature of the issue is better understood, the team cannot anticipate whether this might affect how long the spacecraft can collect and transmit science data. Suzanne Dodd, project manager for Voyager 1 and 2 at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California said in a statement, a mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old 
which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. We're also in interstellar space, a high radiation environment that no spacecraft has flown in before. So there are some big challenges for the engineering team, but I think if there's a way to solve this issue with the AACS, our team will find it. Dodd suggested that it is possible the team will not find the source of the anomaly and will instead adapt to it. If they can identify the source of the issue, they may be able to resolve it through software changes or by using one of the spacecraft's redundant hardware systems. It wouldn't be the first time the Voyager team has had to rely on backup hardware. In 2017, signs of degradation were detected in Voyager 1's primary thrusters, so engineers switched to another set of thrusters that had originally been used during the spacecraft's planetary encounters. Even though the thrusters had not been used for 37 years, they worked. Voyager 1's twin, Voyager 2, which is currently 12.1 billion miles or 19.5 billion kilometers from Earth, is still working properly. Both Voyagers were launched in 1977 and have operated for much longer than mission planners expected. They are the only spacecraft that have collected data in interstellar space. The information they get from this area has helped people understand the heliosphere better. The heliosphere is a diffuse barrier around the planets in our solar system that the Sun creates. Each spacecraft produces approximately four fewer watts of electrical power per year, which drastically limits the number of systems the craft can run. The mission engineering team has prioritized power for science instruments and critical systems over less essential subsystems and heaters. All the science instruments on the two Voyager spacecraft are still functioning, and the Voyager team is working to keep them operating and returning unique science beyond 2025. While the engineering team continues to work to solve the mystery presented by Voyager 1, the science team will continue to make the most of the data coming down from the spacecraft's unique vantage point. Engineers think that Voyager 1 started sending its health and status data to the dead computer after getting a bad command from another computer. This would imply that there is a problem with the computer brains of the famous spaceship, but mission managers don't think it's a threat to the long-term health of the vehicle. They would still like to know exactly what's going on inside Voyager 1. Dodd said in the statement that they are cautiously optimistic but still have more investigating to do. Last year, a team of researchers said a persistent vibrating hum of interstellar gas or plasma waves had been detected by the spacecraft. She also suggested that it is possible that the team will never find the source of the current Voyager 1 mystery and will have to learn to live with it. If they can figure out the issue, they might be able to send a software update or use one of the spacecraft's extra hardware systems to fix it. But for now, it's unclear what caused this problem. Just like the countless things we don't know about life beyond Earth, this issue might be also added to that list, if NASA cannot identify the source of the problem. We may never know what the true cause of the mysterious malfunction could have been, and that's what makes this issue so interesting. When we do find out, we will be able to build satellites with these features which will be launched in the future. These features will help prevent these issues. Until then, we'll just have to wait. So what do you think? What is the source of this issue? Is there something external intervening with the data or are they just malfunctions? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Space Age.